Even though the new Harman Kardon Fly ANCs do have some redeemable qualities to them, unfortunately, I can't help but feel that these headphones are dead on arrival. Because it's just very hard to justify getting these headphones when compared to other mid-tier ANC headphones, like the Sony XP900N or the Surface Headphones 2. And in general, I feel that Harman really needs to get their act together because both these headphones and the JBO Club 950NCs that I reviewed a few weeks ago are gonna have a really hard time competing in today's increasingly competitive ANC headphone market. And for those who may not know, JBO is a sub-brand of Harman and Harman is owned by Samsung. Now, when it comes to price, all three of these headphones retail for $250. But thanks to Sony's plan for headphone world domination, the xp 900 ns routinely like to go on sale for $178. Whereas Microsoft's plan for headphone world domination is by giving you near premium active noise cancellation performance for mid-tier prices. But all jokes aside, if you're looking for a solid pair of mid-tier ANC headphones, either one of these two are solid options, and they'll both be linked down below. Now, some of the redeeming qualities of the Fly ANCs surround its build quality and included carrying case. The Fly ANCs come with a quality hard shell carrying case that isn't all that big. Whereas, even though the Surface 2s also come included with a very premium case, since these headphones can't fully collapse, their case is on the larger side. But then, there are the Sony xp 900 ns which unfortunately only come included with a carrying pouch. So if you do plan on commuting with these headphones, you are going to have to invest in your own hard shell carrying case. Now, when it comes to the headphones themselves, the Fly ANCs are the most premium feeling ones here. Specifically, because almost every surface that you actually touch on these headphones is covered in leatherette. And since the leatherette on these headphones actually feels slightly better than the leatherette on these other two headphones, you think these headphones are more premium when you've got them in your hand. Because with these other two headphones, even though they both also have very good build quality, since the majority of their body is just plastic, you don't get the same illusion like you do with the Fly ANCs. But when it comes to fit, unfortunately, that's a whole other story. The Fly ANCs are by far the least comfortable headphones here. They have the most amount of clamping force here, so they are not big head approved whereas these other two headphones are. And the ear pads on the Fly ANCs are very cramped when compared to these other two headphones. Now, the ear pads on the Sonys are very spacious and they should have no problem accommodating most ear types. But if you have larger ears or ears that stick out a lot, then you might want to go with the Surface 2s because their ear pads are slightly roomier. But ultimately, I do feel the Sony xp 900 ns are more comfortable than the Surface 2s because they have less clamping force and since the Sonys have more padding underneath their headband, they don't create a hot spot after long periods of use like the Surface 2s might for some people like me. Now, when it comes to tech specs, one of the biggest drawbacks about the Fly ANCs is that they're still charging via a micro USB port. Whereas the majority of all of the headphones that are currently getting released charge via a USB-C port. And having a micro USB port on your headphones these days is a real deal breaker, especially if you're an Android user. Now, when it comes to battery life, both the Fly ANCs and Surface Headphones 2 will get the job done, but I do feel that they could be doing better. Now, both of these headphones have an advertised battery life of 20 hours with their ANC turned on, which is a little below average, but you can always stretch out the battery life on the Fly ANCs to 30 hours if you use them with their ANC turned off. But then there are the Sonys, which have an advertised battery life of 30 hours with their ANC turned on, which is a little above average, and you can always stretch the battery life out on these headphones out to 35 hours if you use them with their ANC turned off. But unfortunately, when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, the Sonys are lagging behind here a little bit. 
These headphones can only be connected to one device at a time, so you can't easily hot swap from one device to another. Whereas with these other two headphones, they can be connected to two devices at the same time. So you can easily swap from your phone to your computer, which is definitely a big deal for power users. But even if you're not a power user, it's still nice to be able to. But more importantly, when it comes to actually watching movies or videos on your phone, both the Sony's and Surface 2's have a zero latency across the board, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device, which is definitely always great. Whereas with the Fly ANC's, they also have zero latency when you're using apps like Netflix, Disney Plus, or HBO Max, but they do have a slightly noticeable latency to them whenever you're watching YouTube videos on both an iPhone or an Android device. But now let's talk about listening to music with these headphones. I actually feel the Fly ANC's are the best sounding headphones here. Now personally, I just use them with their stock EQ, but these headphones do have noticeably better clarity and better instrument separation than these other two headphones. Now ultimately, these headphones are better suited for people who prefer a neutral or vocus focus EQ. Because unlike these other two headphones, the bass on the fly ANCs isn't going to physically rattle your head, no matter how much you raise the bass on these headphones through their app. But still, the bass on the Fly ANCs resonates very deep and clean. You're going to definitely hear your bass, but you're not going to physically feel it all that much. But from a technical standpoint, these are the best sounding headphones here because of their clarity and openness. Whereas with the Surface 2s, like I've said time and time again, they sound good enough to get the job done, and they should please most people. Vocals on these headphones are very pronounced, and the bass on these headphones is going to rally your head a decent amount as well. But unfortunately, these headphones have a really hard time controlling their bass. Because sometimes the bass on these headphones might bottom out if you're listening to bass-heavy music even while in your stock EQ. And if you were to go into these headphones' EQ settings and raise the lows and mid lows too much, then their bass is going to bottom out even more frequently. And personally, I feel this is just unacceptable for a pair of $250 headphones. So for that reason, I recommend that you just use these headphones with their stock EQ, or if you are going to mess around with their EQ, don't raise the lows and mid lows too much. But then there are the Sony's, which are the people pleasers here. These headphones have a fully customizable EQ, so you can make them sound however you want. If you want a neutral or vocals heavy EQ like the Fly ANCs, you can do that. Or if you like a bass heavy EQ, then you can also do that. But the thing about the XB900Ns is that they have an extra bass feature. That's what the XB in their name stands for. So if you want, you can make these headphones physically rattle your head way more than your average pair of headphones can. Now, the extra bass feature on the XB900N is a lot of fun to listen to, but admittedly, it can get old after a while, so if you don't want to use it, you can always just turn that feature off. But the extra bass feature on these headphones does add an extra level of immersiveness if you use them while watching movies. It's kind of like having a subwoofer strapped to your head. And most importantly, unlike the bass on the Surface 2s, the bass on the XB900N never bottoms out. Ultimately, I do feel the XB900Ns are going to make most people happy, but I do have to admit the Fly ANCs sound better than the Sony's because of their better clarity and better instrument separation. But now let's talk about the active noise cancellation on these headphones. The ANC on the Fly ANCs is fairly decent. They block out a decent amount of noise for mid-tier ANC headphones, and they do so without a whole lot of cabin pressure, or picking up a lot of wind noise when walking outdoors. But so that you can see for yourself, we're gonna jump into an ANC test.
So, like you may have just seen, the Fly ANCs block out a little more road noise than the XP900N, but does struggle to compete when it comes to blocking out chatter, because the XP900N does do a slightly better job. Now, usually, it's easier for ANC headphones to block out constant low frequency sounds like road noise than it is for them to block out random higher frequency sounds like chatter. So I like to say that Harman is on the right path here, but they do have a lot of room for improvement. But at least the Harmans don't have a lot of cabin pressure, unlike the Surface 2s. Now, the Surface 2s don't have a whole lot of cabin pressure where it's unbearable like some other cheaper or older headphones out there. But you do feel a little something something. But ultimately, if you are looking to block out the most amount of noise here, then the Surface 2s are clearly the way to go. But now let's talk about one of the biggest missing features on the Fly ANCs, and that's an ambient mode. An ambient mode on mid-tier ANC headphones is a rather standard feature these days, and even some entry-level ANC headphones are starting to come included with an ambient mode. And having an ambient mode on your headphones is rather important, Either if you're a constant commuter, you want to be able to still be able to hear your surroundings while you're walking around the city. Or even if you're just at home, you still might want to be able to hear your surroundings while you're watching Harley Quinn on DC Universe. Now, both the XB900N and Surface 2s have an ambient mode, but ultimately Sony's ambient mode is better because it sounds more natural and it also does a much better job of blocking out wind noise when walking outdoors. But finally here's the microphone test and I do feel the microphone on the Fly ACs is the worst sound in the world here. I do sound very far away and this microphone does like to fluctuate a good amount. Unfortunately, this microphone really isn't doing all that much to block out this AC unit I've got here, which you can clearly hear in the background. But then, there's the microphone on the Sony's, which does sound a little muffled, but I do feel that this microphone sounds a little better when compared to the microphone found on the Fly AC's. But finally, there's the microphone on the, the Surface 2's. This microphone does a much better job of picking up my voice, but unfortunately, this microphone really isn't doing all that much to block out that AC unit. But finally, with all that being said, even though the Fly ANCs do have some redeeming qualities to them, like a decent carrying case, a more premium feel to them, great sound, and decent active noise cancellation, I find it very hard to justify getting these headphones when compared to either the Sony XB900N or Surface Headphones 2, currently my two most recommended pair of mid-tier ANC headphones. The Fly ANCs don't fit all that well, they're lacking in ambient mode, and they're still charging via a micro USB port. So if you're looking for an all-around great pair of mid-tier ANC headphones, I still highly recommend the XB900N because of their great fit and you can make them sound however you want. And they also have that extra bass feature if you want it, which can be a lot of fun from time to time and it does add an extra level of immersiveness when you're watching movies. The only drawback is that you are going to have to buy your own case. But if you're looking for the best active noise cancellation, without having to shell out the big bucks for the Sony 1000 XM4s, then the Surface Headphones 2 are the way to go. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit that like button and get subscribed, it helps out more than you realize. If you want to pick any other products up mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description down below, and you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store. But other than that, I'll catch you next time.